Welcome folks, Dr. October here with a brand new type of a video. Thanks for tuning in. If you have been following my channel, you'll know how much I love films and music. And oh boy, how I love them. Mmm, yeah, baby. And after long consideration, I have decided to start this new series of videos for my channel and I hope to keep making them as long as I'm full of piss and vinegar. That being said, I'm calling this series Doctor's Orders. In a nutshell, what I plan to do is that I do kind of a spotlight on a movie. The ones that I love the most and enjoy. By no means do I mean to dissect these movies in an intellectual way, so don't expect a deep thought-provoking video essay from me. I merely want to make fun of them and of course talk of the things that I love about them. I will try to lay it out for you, the viewer, but make it short and tight. The movie we are having a look at today is from the one and only Dario Argento and his directorial debut, first installment of his Animal Trilogy, the Italian suspense thriller Giallo, the bird with the crystal plumage. Right off the bat we saw our killer writing his memoirs, presumably, and from there we get to this rather attractive young lady walking the streets of Rome, looking at her through a viewfinder of our killer slash stalker. I'm actually leaning more now to the stalker side. Ah, music by Ennio Morricone. Of course, we all know him. What a fantastic soundtrack once again. And we get back to the killer, who seems to mark his favorite picture of the bunch. Sets his raincoat with a stepping device of sorts. Uh, ah, we have multiple stepping devices. This, uh, worth saying that uh, these gloves that the killer wearing is made pretty famous by the giallo genre, especially the 60s and 70s era stuff, and uh, Dario Argento famously made it more so, if that made any sense. And here we have the daily papers with their headlines mentioning about the killing spree that's been happening in that neighborhood, and you better remember this guy, he will show up a little bit later again in the movie, and here's a very fantastic introduction to our main protagonist, Sam. And what follows is an expedition dump. Sam is an American living with his English girlfriend in Rome, Italy. He's a journalist and he's just on his way to get his final paycheck from his employer. Dario Argento had a thing for animals, as is evident in this following footage with all the stuffed birds. So he always incorporated all types of animals. Oh, what a cute... Oh, as I was saying. Argento always incorporated animals in the title of his movies, even as characters, and all. Oh, there it is again. Oh, now I got distracted. Okay, all right, so Sam got his final paycheck and is already on his way home. You see, Sam is supposed to leave in a couple of days, but... Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Sam decides to investigate. Clearly, there's a damsel in distress, and he wants to have a closer look when, out of nowhere, he gets almost run over by a car. Well, that's what you get when you're standing in the fucking middle of the road, doofus. And that's a good reminder to always look both ways before crossing the road. And as Sam is trying to go and help the damsel, the killer in the meantime locks him up too. So now Sam is as well in a very tight spot. How are you gonna get yourself out of this now, huh? Suddenly the damsel in distress decides to play hide and seek, which of course confuses Sam. And just when things look grim, Sam might just get help from someone who I don't know if it would be wise to get help. Obviously the glass is soundproof and the guy just says fuck this, I'm going home to get some supper. While the pretty lady is having her last hurrah, Sam makes a futile last attempt to break the soundproof glass, which is laughable, frankly. Ah, seems that the passing stranger have managed to do something good after all and call the cops. Yeah, this lady has definitely kicked the bucket says the sergeant. And he continues on inquiring Sam, how does he know the deceased? And, uh, oh, wait a minute, she's not dead. How the hell did he get to be a sergeant or lieutenant or whatever the fuck? And in comes the husband, who is naturally very concerned. Check this out. I'm gonna rip him in pieces, says the sergeant to Sam and approaches the grieving husband. Meanwhile, Italy's finest are performing their CSI crap. All he's missing is the fucking who. And a major piece of evidence is discovered by the sergeant. Sam thinks, holy hell, those gloves look like a pair of mine. And there's something that looks like blood on them. Or could be lipstick as well. What do I know? I'm no cop. In the interrogation room, the police miss a fantastic opportunity to play good cop, bad cop. Because the sergeant is just way too nice. Well, at least he does ask for his passport. Sam is obviously a 
Suspect. Kudos for that, Sergeant. And if it wasn't already a bad enough day for Sam in this foreboding mist or fog, he is going to get attacked. Thanks to the old lady on the street, our protagonist barely survives the murder attempt. Back at Sam's crib, we have a bodacious British lady, played by Susie Kendall, who is just eager to get the copulation going on. And uh, here, Sam quickly explains what happened to him during the day. And naturally, this, like with everyone else, gets the hormones running. <laughs> Sam decides to relive some of the highlights of his day. I guess just to get his lipid going full on. And uh, what is this? A metronome? I uh, guess it's good for thrusting. The next day, after Sam has watched the suspects in a lineup and talked with the cops, he just decides, fuck this shit, I'm gonna catch the killer myself. You guys are useless. After all, the killer did ruin Sam's home trip. So the very first place Sam goes to is the most obvious suspect. But you know, it is very well known that these Italian giallos and thrillers back in the day, they threw red herrings from left and right and... Just like Sam here threw the cigarettes at uh, the murder attempt victim's husband from the beginning. Time to check back with our killer. What is he up to? Seems up to no good. Again, stalking on people. Man, oh man, they sure did cast some beautiful ladies in this one. Sam and Julia are having a blast while going through the previous victims of the killing spree. Oh, look at us, the two detectives. Sam has gotten wind of the last known place of one of the victims and, uh, sure enough, decides to go and follow the lead. He is greeted by this rather jolly-looking art gallery owner. Who reminds me of someone, but just can't put my finger on who. Yeah, definitely familiar faces. I think it's, uh, oh, I know, Gene Wilder and Hitchcock. Gotta be. After all, Dario Argento was... A big Hitchcock fan, and uh, oftentimes his early movies are referred to as Hitchcockian thrillers. And Sam got a souvenir, which is a rather morbid painting. And uh, for more close-up, we go into a colored version of the very same painting. And uh, holy moly, it seems we're in a completely different location now. Oh, of course, I see. There we have our mysterious killer in a black raincoat. Cut to possible victim number two. And by the way, this is pretty beautifully lit and shot scene. As our possible victim number two is going home, we will see that the killer has gotten a hold of the janitor keys. And, uh, uh, and I again applaud the casting director of this movie. Well done. A little POV shot from smoking. Ah, that wonderful smoke. And enter our killer in black. Nice mouth and nightgown i think it's safe to say that i'm not spoiling anything in if i'm telling that the girl will not live through this um another stylistic killing scene from the master argento oops a little spillage of blood and on the following day the sergeant decides to come over to have a cup of coffee talk about the weather maybe read the stocks how they're doing yeah Look at them, drink their coffee and read the stocks. At this time, our mysterious killer decides it's a perfect time for a prank call and calls the sergeant, who is dumb fucked. Sam, on the other hand, decides to greet the lucky couple who survived the vicious attack from the beginning. And my oh my, how pretty she is, and I'm sure Sam is also thinking about that. Yet, he can't really shake the feeling from the back of his head that something odd is going on here. And there she jumps up the stairs like a gracious gazelle. Cut to a late evening exterior set. We see that someone is following them, but it's not uh, the killer. It's a bodyguard who now is being chased by a the mysterious killer, I presume. I think he's a goner. Yeah, absolutely. What a useless bodyguard. Now ensues a heated chase. Uh, it says, keep the car running. I believe it must be the mysterious killer's sidekick. Sam shoves Julia into what seems to be a dirty, abandoned uh, warehouse. And we have our beautiful assassin following. And here we have a great shot with a poor aim. And another great shot, actually. But then I'm going to skip the rest of this chase, even though it is pretty, pretty good. So uh, fast forward to the streets where Sam finds some people. 
knowing now that he's no longer in grave danger and our mysterious assassin knows that he's lost his chance. Ah, the inner detective of Sam comes into the surface again and he follows the assassin. Where is he going? Ah, a building of sorts. Well, Sam decides to have a closer look. A look-see, like some would say. Ah, and could it be? The assassin is right in front of Sam? But wait a minute. Holy moly. Good luck finding anything from that haystack. I guess you could say that Sam's investigative efforts misfired big time. All right, now it's time to go back to some killing. Wow, again, another beautiful frame and shot. So our newest damsel in distress unknowingly is going to head to the floor where there's no lights. Well, whatever, you must go there if you live there. So the killer in black uses this opportunity to sucker punch the girl from behind and commences with the slashing. Yes, multiple slashes, that's gotta hurt. Last but not least, the death blow. Sam has received a hint that there's a fella in the prison who might be able to help him figure out the identity of our killer. Long story short, Sam received a phone number for a fella who seems dubious as hell. Julia is like, man, I gotta hear and see this shit what he's gonna feed to Sam. The dude is like, yeah, I can figure something out, but it's gonna cost ya. Julia is not happy at all seeing how much dough he's gonna give him. So Sam gives some money to Julia and says, go to Bloomingdale's. Dubious dude grabs his cash, no questions asked. And almost immediately Sam receives a phone call from the mysterious killer. Luckily they are recording it. Oh, let's admire Julia's beauty a little bit more. Back at the police station, now the cops have two recordings from the mysterious killer, but there's a background noise, they cannot figure out what it is. And Sam and Julia are once again admiring that macabre little painting. Whatever that is doing to them, I don't want to know. Ah, a new day has risen and Sam seems to be in high spirits. Ah, look at that, there's their friend. He's like, hey, have you found out about that caller? Sam's like, nah, I don't care about that anymore, I just want to shag. And proceeds by giving his friend a free live sex show. Sam's friend then has this idea that he would take the recording and Sam doesn't mind. Maybe he can do something with it. Maybe he can figure out where it was made in. Sam is obviously still bothered by that painting. It haunts him. There's something eerily familiar. It's like the killer has copied it. So he quickly finds out where the painter lives and off he goes and there he is already. Wow, that was fast. The painter greets him by giving his ladder to his home. Pretty odd if you ask me, but still not as odd as the painter himself. Sam gets invited for a dinner, which would be of course very rude to decline. Yeah, I would clean that fork too if I'd be eating that household. Then suddenly the painter runs out of patience because Sam does not seem to be buying any paintings of his. Then Sam is like, okay, show me what you got and on his way to go and look for a painting for Sam, something escapes his attic room. Now here I must point out that this is one of the funniest parts of the movie. It's genuinely hilarious in my opinion. It's a little bit macabre as well, but hey, it's only a movie. So what had escaped was a tiny little pussy cat. This painter seems to be breeding cats in his attic for nutritious reasons. In other words, he is feasting on them and that's what Sam also feasted upon and that does not do well in his stomach. So Sam is like, I gotta get fuck out of Dodge. This was a complete waste of time. Painter is puzzled and just throws a painting at him. Sam makes a quick call to Julia saying that it was all a waste of time. Unbeknownst to both of them, the mysterious killer in black is making his approach to Julia's apartment. She hears some commotion from the hallway and thinks that it's Sam, but she is in for a surprise. That is not Sam. Better run back to the apartment, lock it tight, call the cops, and uh, whatever you do, just don't start organizing your bills. Then the killer cuts off the phone lines. This is definitely not his first tango. Julia decides then to double check. She really did indeed lock the door and checks the window that everything is safe and sound. Yeah, nothing goes through that glass. And boom, there goes the electricity. This killer surely has gone through his killer's handbook 101. That being said, this seems a little bit like an improvised move. Making a hole on the door, where he of course makes a little peekaboo, where Julia gets enraged. And as the saying goes, attack is the best defense. Oh, too bad. So many misses. 
Good luck with that. Oh, she's very discouraged. Julia's days seem to be numbered. Sam is coming in the nick of time. So the killer bails. At this stage, Sam and Julia are determined to go back to the States. And uh, oops, we have another peeping Tom there. Watch out, people. Ah, it's just their goofy friend. Ha, ah, that was hilarious. Hey, it's just me. Hey, about that phone call recording you gave me, I managed to figure out what's the background noise. Oh, yeah, what? It's a bird, which is very amusing for Sam. And it's not just any type of bird. It's a very special bird and there's one of those here in Italy in a zoo. And to the zoo they go. If you remember the title of the movie by now, I'm sure you might guess what type of a bird it is. And yes, that is correct. It is the bird with the crystal plumage. And since it's a very rare bird and only one of them is in Italy, how could the sound of it get in the background of a telephone call? Well, it's obviously in this building. Here Sam connects the dots. From the very first time he went to see the husband of the victim of the murder attempt in the beginning of the movie. And that is when he first heard the sound from the window. That activates the roadrunner in Sam. And off he runs to the apartment where the husband is fighting with the wife. Who is fighting who here is the question. Seems that the husband is the culprit. But we all know that in these type of movies you can never be sure. And Sam is saying the jig is up, drop the knife. The red haired lady makes a run for it. More fighting ensues next to the window. Conveniently open window and we might all guess what's gonna happen next. Oops. Splats. A human pancake everyone. As he is taking his last breaths he confesses to the murders and tells everyone how much he loves his wife, where the sergeant is like, poor bastard. Sam desperately needs a smoke, but has no lighter, so the policeman kindly offers him a lighter. Sam goes to this bystanding geezer and asks, have you seen my girlfriend around? Yes, yeah, she ran over there with another guy and a girl. I guess we are all on the same page, and we know who the real killer is. Sam needs to rely once again to the bystanders and ask for her guidance. And he finds his way to the room. Supposedly the killer has gone. Surprise, surprise, the lights don't work. And this causes Sam to chip over and almost knocks the telephone on Julia's head, who is tied down on the floor. Aha, that's a familiar painting. He's definitely in the right place. And oops, trips again. Damn dark room. Sam nearly gets impaled by the knife, held by his goofy friend, who has this very weird smile on his face. But lo and behold... He's being killed as well. And now drum roll please. Time for the shocking reveal of the identity of our killer in black. Black cloth killer. Oh, there's a striptease coming out. Oh, it's the red haired lady from the beginning. I didn't see that coming. In disbelief, Sam is trying to make sense out of it. You were attacked. But no, Sam's mind played tricks on him. It was the other way around. What a twist, hey? You evil bitch, Sam says. And leaps towards her, but she manages to lock Sam inside. Julia's trying her best to be somehow helpful. And Sam is dead set on not letting the killer go away this time. If I were Sam, though, I'd still be extremely careful. Ah, another dark room. Well, I think hard and long. Oh, And there we go. Captured. Our protagonist got captured, suckered into a very easy trap. Our killer then proceeds tormenting Sam. Maybe we'll poke an eye or two. Or, oh, it's just a card on the hand that's also pretty nasty. Then she decides to jump on the whatever that thing is on top of Sam. And Sam is really, really in a tight spot here. Oops. And what's happened here? Ah, karate chop. So it seems Julia managed to be helpful after all, even though being tied up and all, and managed to call the cops. So the sergeant is there to save the day with the backup and everything. Sam really looks relieved, ready to give a... Hug. Oh yeah, manly hug. No shame in that indeed. He's lucky and grateful to be alive. Cut to a TV newsroom where we have our sergeant nearly having a nap by the looks of it. Alongside him a smoking psychologist and they're both just basically saying the nitty gritty details about this whole killing spree. But uh, we're not going to get into that now. I suggest you to watch the entire movie. And so we are here in the end. The final beats of the movie. That was... Dario Argento's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I did. I have a candy in my mouth and I hope it's not a problem. I'm going to record this last bit just without any edits and what, 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 whatever. The usual Dr. Old October style. <laughs> um, what can I say? There's a lot I love in this movie. The stylish killing scenes. Obviously the score by Ennio Morricone. Uh, Argento's director's debut. 
it's not flawless, but it's it's really damn good entertaining movie. I suggest to watch this movie on a rainy evening, have a glass of wine, put some mood lighting on, and immerse yourself into a stylistic Italian giallo. That being said, thank you all for watching. If you endured until the end, I applaud you and I thank you humbly. Hope to see you next time. Take care, everyone. Cheers.